Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about some tough stuff about things you deal with on a farm or in life in general. So grab yourself a hot beverage, a hot tea, hot coffee, and grab yourself a seat and let's sit down and have a talk today. Right here on Garden Jen's Journey. homestead isn't always a, a beautiful bed of roses. Um, sometimes it's a rotten uh, mess and um, you have to take the good and the bad when it comes to living on a homestead um, or in life in general. Uh, Thursday here on the homestead uh, we had to put down a second cat um, recently. Um, he was very, very sick. And uh, we had noticed that there was a decline in his health after we had put our other cat, Angel, down. And I'll share a video above <laughs> called uh, Remembering the Spice of Life um, about Angel and when we had to put her down uh, because she was dealing with uh, cancer and it was it was time to alleviate her suffering strange things happen sometimes in life and one of them happened here on our homestead and we were just really kind of interested in what was going on when we were living in the city um, my son and I were living together um, at the time until uh, my husband came into our life and we had already adopted two female calico cats as therapy animals and pets and companions to help us deal with uh, our traumas and our PTSD and things like that. So we had adopted two calico cats back in 2008. And then uh, eventually uh, my husband comes back into our lives and around 2014 um, we were out and about one day and it was a stormy kind of, of evening it was late evening and it was stormy and uh, we noticed that there was a young kitten running around terrified and, and, and things and it's really disturbing so we tried uh, to rescue said kitten um, because we knew that it wasn't supposed to be out here in this weather it was apparently abandoned and uh, so being the animal lovers and uh, uh, just people who care uh, we stopped and we tried to rescue this kitten well this kitten <laughs> was scared to death and it tore apart my husband's hand trying to uh, rescue it and um, so we ended up putting out a car uh, animal crate and uh, put some food in it at right where we had seen the kitten and within about half an hour we had trapped the kitten and we brought it in and uh, once it calmed down and realized it was safe it was all over for that kitten. It was just loves and giving me attention. And man, he was so happy to be rescued once he found out he was safe. Well, his, his name was Bandit because he stole our hearts. So we named him Bandit. And it wasn't but a couple of days later, another not so great weather day, that um, I heard the pathetic cry of another kitten. And, um, you know, it was just, you could tell that this, this poor thing was terrified somewhere around our apartment building. And so um, we lived in a townhome and we had wrapped around porches on the front side. 
So I again set out the crate with some food in it and by the end of the day we captured the second kitten and uh, that one we called Smokey because he was a smoke gray. And I'll share a, a video up here I did of him. He just recently went into the vet because he had to have surgery um, on his mouth. He's doing wonderful. But Bandit, on the other hand, um, well, let's get back to where I was going first. <laughs> so we had, we now had two girls and two boys, and there was quite an age difference between them. Um, like I said, we adopted the girls in about 2008 and then the boys we got in 2014 so there's basically a six year age difference between them when the boys started growing up and maturing and becoming cats um, they paired up with the girls um, each one had its preferred mate and that was their companion that was their buddy and it was really interesting to watch because cats are known to be promiscuous. You know, when people say, oh, you've been catting around, it's not a compliment at all. Uh, cats are very promiscuous. But uh, our cats, they paired off and they stayed true, you know. Um, it was just a big happy family around here, so to speak. And then, Eventually, we had kittens from another cat that we had adopted. And we had this joke because Bandit would like to sit on the uh, table next to our door. We had a big uh, window in our inside door and he would look out at the outside cat and so we, we used to say that he had the hots for her and then when she ended up pregnant and had kittens of her own we kind of teased and said uh, they were his kittens because he seemed to have the hots for, for a latte um, even though he was fixed and he never did business with Latte. We know who the kitten's uh, father actually is. We've seen him around. But that was just a big joke around our, our home. And when the kittens came inside, because they were outside kittens, the ones that were born to Latte, they would be allowed to come in in the winter because they were so tiny, especially Smoke Bomb. I think I've shared pictures of her before. If not, I'll share some pictures. Um, but she was the runt, and they almost didn't make it, um, but they made it. And so in the winter, they were allowed to come inside and warm up by the fire and things like that. And Bandit just took to them and took them under his wing and, and things like that. Where the other adult cats really didn't want anything to do with them. And so again, it kind of built the story that he was their dad and uh, then of course Uncle Smokey and Aunt Abby the you know the the relatives of our little cat pride and so it was just a, a wonderful little story that we had of our cat family again I had to put Angel down last year because of her cancer but that was okay for the kittens and things because she was the wicked stepmother she wasn't very nice to those kittens um, but it broke Bandit's heart. Um, he really, really struggled. Um, Angel could be kind of grumpy and could rip him a new one now and then, but they were still very, very close companions. And so when she didn't come back, it kind of broke his heart. And we noticed he started losing weight, and he really didn't have the will to do anything anymore. So I was concerned and uh, got her to start eating again because he didn't want to eat. He didn't want to do anything. I've lost a cat already to broken heart syndrome when I was uh, little, so I didn't want to lose one now <laughs> as an adult. I just put one in the ground. I wasn't ready to put another one in the ground. So even if Bandit didn't want to fight, 
I was going to fight for him until he got his willpower back. So that's what we did. We did supportive care for him as long as we could. Uh, his, his appetite started coming back. His feistiness started coming back. Um, he started acting more normal for a while. And then uh, we noticed, or at least I noticed, my husband was kind of in denial. And uh, I don't really blame him. Bennett was his buddy. That was his cat. That was his, his companion. And so he didn't want to believe that uh, Bandit was going downhill. Um, but I could see, I could see the signs that, uh, Bandit started hiding again. He wasn't coming out much. He came out to eat, and, uh, that was about it. And, uh, so I took him to the vet on Thursday. And, uh, they called me. And I was pretty sure I was going to hear this news anyway. So, you know, it wasn't anything that I was shocked by. But, uh, when she called me, she had told me that, uh, he was very, very, very sick. Very sick cat. They didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, they were thinking he had uh, some feline uh, leukemia, maybe, or some of those other feline diseases. Um, but the test that they had could not confirm what was wrong with him, just that he was extremely sick. And she had said that uh, his potassium levels were through the roof. He was very dehydrated, so he he hadn't been drinking, just eating. And we fed him wet food because that's all he would eat. So I tried to make sure he had moisture in the wet food. Um, but, um, yeah, he was very, very sick. And she said she was surprised so far that with the way his blood levels were that he hadn't had a heart attack already because that's where he was going. He was, he was basically going to have a heart attack and die any minute now kind of thing. He was that, that bad. And uh, there was nothing they could do for him. It Basically, his body was shutting down. It, his body had given up. And so we decided that um, it was time to put him down as well and uh, let him go. And uh, that was difficult. Um, we fought so hard for him. He just couldn't handle it anymore. And... Uh, so, <clears throat> we had him euthanized, and uh, <clears throat> it's winter here. The ground's frozen. Um, but my husband was adamant that we bring him back home and be able to bury him next to his wife, Angel. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but having a dead body just hanging out is not really my idea of cool. <clears throat> and uh, for me, that would be really traumatizing to have one of our beloved animals just laying dead on our property until spring <clears throat> or worse having this dead animal laying around in varmints come find it and you know do nasty things to it and you see that um, I didn't want to deal with that I did not want to have to worry about having a body here until spring so uh, he let me make the decision because I was the one footing the bill for this expensive vet visit. Um, we had him cremated and uh, so he'll be in a small little jar of, of ashes which is a lot easier on the eyes and stomach. Um, and then when the ground thaws in the spring we're gonna put his uh, ashes in with with Angel in her grave garden area. And. Uh, so it's, it's been very, very tough here on the homestead the past three years. Uh, the past three years, we've lost three beloved pets. Um, Dyson we put down three years ago because of cancer. Angel I put down last year because of cancer. And then this year, uh, we lost Bandit. Um, not to mention the two roosters that we had to put down because they uh, got a little too big for their britches. And that duck that was uh, killed from a great hardened owl. And chickens that were massacred because of a coyote. So we've dealt with a lot of death here on our farm. 
and uh, it's it's been hard. Um, we're vegetarians. Uh, we don't kill animals here for for meat. It's just not how we operate. Um, so killing isn't a part of our everyday life. Death isn't a part of our everyday life. And so when things like this happen for us, um, it's devastating because uh, these are animals that we have loved as as companions, um, and we just really value them. Not saying that people who humanely raise farm animals and use them for meat do not love their animals. I'm not saying that at all because there are some well documented <laughs> farms that are very humane and love their animals as best they can before they dispatch them for food. But I'm just saying here on our farm because death isn't an everyday thing that we have to deal with since we don't butcher our animals on a regular basis. Having them die this way um, is just really hard to deal with really really hard to deal with but this is kind of what you sign up for when you have a homestead or when you have pets companions things like that and even if you don't have animals in your life there's gonna be people in your life that die um, this year was the four year anniversary of when my husband's father passed away and that was very difficult um, you might have seen we have a memorial stone in the garden that was given as a, a gift on the day of his funeral. So that's here in the garden. Um, so we dealt with that. Um, and there's been some other deaths that have happened recently. We just lost our pastor uh, because of COVID and he had heart failure. His funeral is this weekend. I lost two church members, other church members from a different church uh, about a month ago because of COVID. And um, so this dealing with death thing, it's very hard, very, very hard. But you have to take the good with the bad. Um, the good is there's lots of babies coming, lots and lots of babies coming, um, both humans and, and animals. Um, it's just around the corner we're going to be hatching chicks and this year we're actually going to hatch our own so I'm excited for that you know there's life coming it's not all death and decay and horrible stuff it's just the cycle of life unfortunately here on earth um, until the Lord comes and resets things as it were um, but I just wanted to share that with you today that um, death and life and this cycle um, is really, really a struggle at times, but uh, it's something that we have to work through. And I hope that wherever you are in life, you know, if you're struggling with, with uh, animals or if you're struggling with, with humans or maybe you're really depressed yourself and you just don't feel like going on anymore, um, chin up and hold on. Um, you can get through this. And please reach out to somebody to talk to them about your struggles. Call a crisis health helpline if you need to, to talk with people. There's people out there who want to help you get through the struggles you're dealing with. You know, death isn't easy for, for anyone. Um, sure, people can say, oh, it doesn't bother me. But death isn't natural. <laughs> it's, it's just something that really gives you an ache in your soul because you're you've lost something something dear to you and uh, that's something you can't get back and uh, so cherish the memories of whatever it is that you have lost and um, just know that things will get better eventually maybe not right now but things will get better so keep your chin up if you need to reach out to support people and uh, the struggle is real for everybody. I'm not alone. You're not alone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it encouraging. That's what I aim to do. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. It lets other people know that the video is worth watching. And share it with other people who might need to just have a word of encouragement today. And I thank you for being a part of my journey. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe so you can kind of stay in touch with what's going on on this channel. And last but not least, I hope, really, really hope, that wherever you are, you're wonderfully blessed. Till next time, everybody. Bye-bye.